of XPW TV. I am the host, Chris Kloss. And I'm for I, I guess it's my privilege. Some privilege to have Chico back. Chico Larry Rivera. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The true host of the XPW TV, as you all know. And ladies and gentlemen, I took, I had to take, oh, yeah. oh, look at that. I had to take a little time off to, to undergo recuperation. For a concussion, I suffer at the redemption show. But most importantly, Chick, what happened? I am back to return to tell you that I am the true host of the SPW TV right here, Chick. Well, fans, last week we saw. You are unbelievable. We saw what went down at Redemption, including the debuts of Vampiro and Shaggy 2 Dope member of ICP, and it appeared at Redemption they were Black Army for life. Unbelievable. That's, that, that's part of why I had this crap in my head, chick. This, this, what you call it? Are you, you sure you're hey, all right? Yeah, right. 
the most important thing <laughs> of this life, well, Gaetasoi, the most important thing is that we have a new XPW World Heavyweight Champion in the form of the Messiah. Long live the army. Que viva el ejército. Fans, uh, we, we did see what went down at Redemption, but right now we're going to see what exactly went down the confrontation between the Black Army, Josh Lazy, the ICP, and Vampiro. All right, man. It, it looks like it's bulging, like it's bulging out. XPW's Redemption was surrounded by an air of mystery. It was well known that Vampiro and the ICP would be making their XPW debuts, but the question remained, on which side would their allegiance lay? The Black Army made their way to the ring, and Rob Black said that regardless of the fact that XPW champion Sabu had a broken ankle and was not in the building that night, the XPW title was still to be defended. If Josh Lacey couldn't find someone to defend the strap, then he would have to defend it himself. But before Black could utter another word, Vampiro and Shaggy Too Dope made their way to the ring. Vampiro grabbed the microphone from Lacey and got in Black's face before turning around and decking Sabu's manager. The Black Army, with its apparent two new members, beat the hell out of Lazy and left him the challenge of finding someone to defend the XPW title for Sabu. Later that night, Lazy made his way to the ring, apparently ready for battle. Despite the valiant notion, Messiah made easy work of the XPW champion's manager, and after a godsmack, it appeared as if a new XPW champion was to be crowned. But as Black celebrated on the outside, and Messiah went for the cover, the familiar sound of breaking glass was heard, and New Jack made his way to the ring. With their plan foiled, Messiah was in for the fight of his life. Jack hit Messiah with everything from his fist to a trash can, road signs, a strategically placed golf club, and his ever trusty guitar. But the XPW king of the deathmatch was not going down. Twice previously, he had Sabu beat in the middle of the ring. His opportunity to become champion without having to pin Sabu was not going to go unfulfilled. Messiah fought back with everything he had, pure wrestling ability mixed with the hardcore skills that helped him capture the king of the deathmatch title proved to be too much for New Jack as he fell victim to the godsmack and was pinned in the middle of the ring as the Messiah fulfilled his holy crusade to become XPW World Heavyweight Champion. But almost as quickly as he had pinned New Jack, our tribal supreme was in the ring ready to blindside the new XPW world champion with a steel chair. Supreme's attack prompted the Messiah, fellow Black Army member, Vicious Big Prime, currently in the midst of a brutal feud with the original XPW Deathmatch King to come to Messiah's aid. A wild brawl ensued, and as Supreme duct taped Grimes to a table, allowing New Jack to climb to the top of the Grand Olympic Auditorium, over 35 feet in the air, Vampiro and Shaggy hit the ring, and what all in attendance, including the Black Army, thought was a victory celebration, but nothing could have been further from the truth. Vampiro and Shaggy grabbed the XPW and king of the deathmatch title. Vampiro nailed Rob Black, busting the XPW CEO open and sending him crashing to the canvas. The two then picked Black back up 
and added insult to even more injury when Shaggy clocked Black with the XPW World title. With Black on his back, New Jack performed perhaps the biggest leap in the history of professional wrestling and went crashing through Vic Grimes and a table below. With Crack, Cronus, and even Larry Rivera out cold in the locker room, apparently from premeditated attack from Vamp and Shaggy, the dark duo turned their attention to the Messiah, who ended up on the receiving end of one of Vampiro's world famous nail in the coffin. With the Black Army laying in pools of their own blood, Vampiro and Shaggy celebrated and then left the arena with both the XPW World and King of the Deathmatch titles in their hands. Just days later, Black received a package at the XPW offices. Its content, the XPW titles, and a note from Vampiro warning them that Dark Carnival has begun. Messiah now has his belt back, but a fire burns in his soul as XPW prepares itself for the impact of Messiah's Rapture, the only question is, who will survive? You are black? People like you just make me sick. You're a bitch, bitch, bitch. You think because you got money you can buy Vampiro? It just don't work that way. Sapu, you've been ducking my ass for the last 12 years. You've been running around, you're the hardcore champ. You've been doing this and that in Japan and ECW. Well, now I'm here in XPW. I'm the man. I'm the champion. It ain't Messiah. It ain't you. It ain't that bitch, punk-ass, raw black and his big dough. It's me, Vampiro, the kid from the streets, the kid from the barrio in Mexico. That's right. I'm the champ. You want this belt back, you come and get it. This is supposed to be my night. I'm the XPW World Heavyweight Champion. I'm the King of the Deathmatch Champion. Those belts belong to me. Vampiro ICP, where the hell do you get off doing what you just did? We brought you in this company. Vampiro, you think you're gonna get away with this? This isn't WCW where you can talk your trash and no one's gonna f***ing touch you. This is f***ing XPW. You now just become the hunted. Those belts are coming back to me and the Black Army. Sabu, lazy, there's nothing you can do about it. Those belts belong to me. The future is mine and there's not a goddamn thing you can do about it. This is fun. You do, know, I got a lump in the head and a concussion from this two ingrate. I thought <laughs> we had the kid chief, the brother chief, together, you know, the rock and roll. We all involved in that business a little bit. But now I realize that these two clouds is exactly what they are a pair of clouds that don't know music. When it comes, you face them in the face. This rap. The crap you call rap, that's why rap rhyming, rap, rhyming with, rap rhyming with crap. You can't call it music, chick. It was all of the cow. You know, for 12 hours, I got it. Wait, it was all of the cow. Calm down, calm down, hold the phone and stop the horses, buddy. You gotta give the psychological advantage to the Dark Carnival heading into the Olympic Auditorium Saturday night, July the 7th. I mean, they don't have the titles, but the mind game. The mind games they're playing by sending the titles back. I mean, these guys definitely have the psychological advantage in their corner. Chief oh, well, oh, let me oh, tell you oh, something. Oh, 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 they, oh, oh, they have started psychological, whatever you want to call it. They have started a type of event that they are not going to be able to, be, to reverse. It's going, they, you might, listen to me, Chief of the Messiah is piece of the Robert Black. He's piece of the entire army. It's losing their mind. And the Messiah is promising. Rock. Rock, Chief. 
He raps you. And when he raps you, come no one. Remember that. He's losing his mind, Rob Black. Tell him about the ticket. But tell him. Take it. Folks, speaking rapture. Mm -hmm. Speaking of rapture, coming up Saturday night, July the 7th, from the Grand Olympic Auditorium, right in the heart of downtown LA, just a couple of blocks away from the old Staples Center. Now, tickets are on sale right now as we speak. Ticketmaster, charge by phone, 213. 480-3232. You can go to Ticketmaster.com or all of the Ticketmaster locations here in Southern California. Now, specialty, quality tickets are available. Reserve seating strictly through XPW. Call the offices at 818-755-8757 or you can come to the Palacio offices <laughs> here in North Hollywood, 11133 Van Owen Street. Sweet letter D, Dorco Dude Life. That's right. Or you can go to xpwrestling.com. Saturday night, July the 7th. This is one not to miss. The big summer show for extreme professional wrestling. Saturday night, July the 7th at the Grand Olympic Auditorium right in the heart of downtown LA. Now, folks, when we return, we're going to take you back to some of the highlights of XPW's redemption. There it is, the bump. Here it is, wrestling fans. The long-awaited 8x10 photographs of Lizzie Borden. Here exclusively at XPWrestling.com, you can receive these beautiful, beautiful photographs personally autographed by Lizzie Borden herself and personally to you. $10 a piece, or you can get all four for $35. And when you buy this special package, you will get a limited edition bonus photograph. That's hot. Real hot. XPW, Lizzie Borden. Get them. Hot. Hot. The dawning of a new era. Old rivalries rekindled. And new enemies emerge. As XPW presents Rapture live Saturday night, July 7th, from the Grand Olympic Auditorium in L.A. Call Ticketmaster, 213-480-3232, or the XPW box office at 818-755-8757. Who will survive the Rapture? What is this all about? Telling him to get the hell... Oh! And Angel just slapped Mr. Andy. Boots to the midsection, clothesline, duck underneath. Goes shake this... Mr. 80's done by DDT coming up, break to the back. And Mr. 80's taking care of Angel. But now, Crack taking care of Mr. 80's. This match officially underway. The big man, Crack, hammering. Mr. 80's with those big right hands. Irish whip coming up. Duck underneath from Mr. 80's, another one. Back to the other side. Oh, look at this. Back body drop from Crack. Oh, look at this. 80's hanging on. Going for a pin. One, two, only two. What a move that was from Mr. 80's. Big boot to the midsection from the big man Crack Cradle. One, referee down, only one that time. Crack with the upper hand. Forearms to the back. And look at Crack still wrestling with those goofy looking shades on. 80's going, looks like a rocket dropper perhaps. Sunset flip. One, referee down, referee very slow on that count. Crack hammering away at Mr. 80's Dynamite D. And Dynamite D's got to move in this match, folks. He cannot match strength with the big man crack. He has got to move. He has got to use his quickness in this match. Well, the results are going to be, as you see right now, crack just taking care of, just manhandling Mr. 80's Dynamite D in the early goings of this matchup. Get in here! Dynamite D. Oh, no. What is he doing in here? Angel! A little double team. A little threesome, perhaps. Oh, no. What was that? What's that going to be? And look at them. And the referee wants no part either. I don't blame him. Crack. i tell you, man, say what you want about these two guys. If they get the job done in the squared circle. Looks like a power slam coming up from the big man Crack. And look at that. He just drove him. 
roll them into the canvas. Referee down, another count, near fall, only two. And you can see Crack quite winded right now. I don't know if it's because of the excitement from Angel in the ring. Oh, look at that. Michinoku driver from the big man Crack plants Dynamite D into the canvas once again. Crack throughout the course of this match, really, really dominating. I mean, the upper hand throughout the whole match. And it looks like a textbook suplex coming up as Angel cheering him on. Crack. Look at the elevation up in the air. Oh, beautifully executed by the big man Crack. What a suplex that was. Mr. 80's Dynamite D has got his hand full in this match. I'm sure he'd be ra rather be smoking some Crack than wrestling Crack at this point in time. Irish whip from Pillar the Post. Crack attempting to follow him up. Mr. 80's. Perch in the near side. Look at this crack. Oh, look at that. Right into the top turnbuckle. And now it's 80's turn. 80's firing away, firing back at the big man crack. Of course, later tonight, folks, the debut of ICP and the insane club punch. Oh, no! Do I have to watch this? Angel! Ah! What is this? No more! No more! But Angel says the opposite! He wants more! And so does Crack! Close line! Oh, you know what that's setting up for? Dynamite D possibly, yeah, the DDT! Oh, but look at that! Crack just barely saved his life partner with a clothesline. As he was about to DDT, but I think he got some of that. Angel falling face first. As Mr. 80's Dynamite D was attempting the DDT, but Crack nailing Mr. 80's with the clothesline. I still think Angel got some of that DDT as he went head first right into the canvas. Angel, where he should be on the outside now, drop kick from Mr. 80's as Crack goes down. Mr. 80's trying to capitalize now on the big man crack in this matchup. <laughs> Elbow, oh! Angel is jealous! Look at him! Ah, actually, I prefer not to. Mr. 80's Dynamite D with crack with the upper hand in this matchup at the Grand Olympic Auditorium in downtown Los Angeles. Thousands on hand. We thank you all for watching. Mr. 80's Dynamite D, another Irish whip coming up reversal. Going the big man crack, he's got the momentum. Off the rope, clothesline, oh no effect. No effect whatsoever, crack still on his feet. Oh, but look at that low blow from Mr. 80's Dynamite D, and now crack goes down. That clothesline, that huge clothesline with the momentum, absolutely no effect on the big man headbutt. Headbutt right into the groin. And once again, that seemed to hurt Angel more than it did crack. These guys are sick. ADT coming up. Oh no, look at this counter. Counter by Crack as he plants. Mr. 80 way up high on the top rope. Hammering away at the head with a huge right fist. What's he doing? He's calling over to the referee. Referee Angel. And look at this top bulldog from the top. Mr. 80 just nailing Crack with the bulldog from the top rope. And look at Angel on the ring apron. What the hell is he doing? Crack. Signaling to him earlier on. I don't know if they have something in mind, folks. Mr. 80's Dynamite D with an iron whip to the far side. Crack reverses. Oh, the Cracker Jack! He got him with the Cracker Jack. What a move that is! Give me the mic! Crack, give me the mic! Crack apparently asking for the microphone and getting it from Ron Head. Dynamite D! Jake Roberts, whoever you want to be. You're not going to get a chance to pull a snake out. I'm going to pull out my own snake. No! What the hell? This is sick. Ah! Oh, look at that 80. CDT. CDT. It's over. One, two. He got him. Mr. 80 side of my team with a huge win. A huge win over crack. Mr. 80's better than he's looking at Angel running for his life. He's got the 
make. What he's going to do with it, I don't know, and I don't want to know. Angel running out of here, running out of the Olympic Auditorium with the snake. Mr. 80, Dynamite D, what a win. Oh, look at that, Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor from behind, no sour. What the hell is going on here? Paul T, the manager of Nosawa's out here as well. Mr. Rady just got the huge win. And now Nosawa, I mean the nerve of this guy. A Pearl Harbor job here on Memorial Day weekend in the United States. What a creep. Nosawa basically coming to the ring and sneak attacking. Oh, he just sprayed that mist right in the eyes of Mr. 80's Dynamite D. And look at this, another mad set. For Mr. 80's Dynamite D, obviously Nosawa very bitter of the loss that he, that he suffered from the hands of Mr. 80's Dynamite D at that three-way dance we saw a few months ago in Van Nuys. Nonetheless, he's back, and of course he's here in the United States, still here, of course coming from Japan, coming to the United States with Onita for that exploding ring match. Onita hightailing it out of the United States back to Japan and basically Nosawa and manager Paul T stuck here in the United States. Nosawa, however, with all that in mind, making a huge name for himself here at XPW, and of course, all around the world. Nosawa, the first Asian, the first man of Asian descent to, to hold a Mexican heavyweight title down south. What an accomplishment that is for Nosawa. Huge chop now from Mr. 80's Dynamite D. Another, oh look at that, another short clothesline. Perhaps, perhaps DDT once again coming up. <laughs> Mr. 80's Dynamite D made he had to wrestle crack. And now blindsided, attack, Pearl Harbor sneak attack from Japan's own Nosawa here on Memorial Day weekend. Look at that Russian Lake Sweep from Mr. 80's Dynamite D. And look at that, you gotta give Dynamite D credit, man. All this resiliency still on oh, knee. Just drop the knee right into the sternum area. One, two, referee down, only two once again near fall. Continuing to hammer away. Is this Mr. Miyagi? Only two again, near fall. Mr. 80's done with the, I mean, just coming up that huge battle with the huge man crack. Now, one on one with No Sawa. Oh, look at this, he's going for the D driver. They nailed him. Planted Nosawa's head right in the center of the ring, and Paul T on the ringside here has got one of those Japanese self-propelling fans. What's he call? Oh, look at that! Smack his chin right on that ring apron. Mr. 80's Dynamite D nailing Nosawa's manager as he goes down to the ringside here. Another DDT coming up. Oh, look at this! Counter into a beautiful armbar. The Japanese armbar from Nosawa. Mr. 80's presence of mind grabbing the bottom rope. And Nosawa, look at him, man, he's living. He thought this was going to be easy picking after Mr. 80 just went through a huge battle with crack. Nosawa, listen to his chop. Listen to that. The crowd here in Los Angeles responding. From pillar to post once again. Reversal to the far side, following up with a big clothesline. Mr. 80 got an ID. He rammed. Continuously, those left shoulders into the midsection. What do we have here? A face buster. Overhead face buster slam from Mr. 80's Dynamite D right onto Japan's own Nosawa. One, two, whoa, only two near foul. What, what an accomplishment for Mr. 80's if he were to get two victories back to back on the same night right after another here in XPW. And it could very well happen tonight. Oh, look at that. Brain Buster executed beautifully from Mr. 80's Dynamite D. Mr. 80's barely rolling over on top. Only two. Paul T from Japan as well. Cheering his man on. So much invested in the star wrestling in the United States. And look at Mr. 80's from the top rope. Oh, look at that missile drop kick. A page out of Homeless Jimmy's book right there. A missile drop kick delivered right onto Nosawa from Mr. 80's Dynamite D. What a match this has turned out to be. Yet another match that wasn't signed for tonight's card. 
Grabbing Mr. 80's Dynamite is 80's ramming Nosawa into the, into the near side here. With fist to the head. Irish whip to the far side. Oh, look at that heel kick. Beautiful heel kick. Springing right out of the far side, right out of the turnbuckles. With the momentum as he just nailed Mr. 80's Dynamite D going for a German suplex counter now. Oh, look at that. Right to the groin. German suplex coming up. And he nailed. He nailed Mr. 80 as Mr. 80's landed right on the back of his neck. Nosawa with the upper hand now in this matchup. Scoop up. Oh, Michinoku driver from Nosawa. And that's it. It's over. You got to give it up for Mr. 80's Dynamite D. Not only at Redemption did he get the victory over the big man crack, but he had to put up with the very shady antics of your buddy Angel at the ringside area. He got the win only to be sneak attack. Pearl Harbor from behind from Japan Zone of South. Unbelievable. When you talk about these two guys, you ask the Larry Rivera, there's no love lost. For this, this Nosawa, I mean, hey, first of all, Chico, the Japan Nosawa, you remember a few months ago, he was getting involved in the Robert Black Army trying to provoke the situation when he was stuck here in the U.S. But let me... Hey, this is Larry. You all right? Hey, Larry. I'm going to tell you that this is going to end, okay? And as far as the dynamite be, it was an up and down night for him. That's the only way to explain. We, Milago, we on the air, Chip. Fans, when we return, we go backstage at Redemption and get a few words from all major guns. The dawning of a new era. Old rivalries rekindled. And new enemies emerge. As XPW presents Rapture live Saturday night, July 7th, from the Grand Olympic Auditorium in LA. Call Ticketmaster 213 480 3232 or the XPW box office at 818 755 8757. Who will survive the Rapture? Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Kloss here getting ready for the summer. Of course, you can see the Bills to create a little shadiness up here. I want to talk about, before we get into the summer look, the old fall look, of course, Lizzie Borden. Don't cross the boss's wife. You remember that shirt? These shirts, collector's item, never again to be printed. Sabu, scarred for life, and the Messiah, the new XPW World Heavyweight Champion. Holy schwa, white crash, Johnny Webb over here. Fried chicken and ass kicking now. The welfare check you saw up there. Folks, the big news. Four brand new designs never, never seen before in the history of XPW are going to be on sale July the 7th at the Grand Olympic Auditorium from Rapture. Polo, Calvin Klein. I mean, all the designers from all over the world want a piece of the action from the new designs, four new designs at the XPW show July the 7th at the Olympic Auditorium because... There. You know, Liz, you pathetic little bitch. You think that little spanking of my ass was really gonna do anything to me? You know, I've gotten a, a lot more than that when I'm having sex or something. You know, you're pathetic, and you think this is over, bitch? It has just begun. Ladies and gentlemen, it should come as no surprise to you. Now, what happened to Mayor Gunn right there was because she got exactly what she deserved. This goes to show that you do not cross the Robert Black Army, and especially you do not cross the wife of the boss, the Lisi Boy and Jim. Remember that, that sexiest woman. Listen, man. Jim. So, next week, make sure to tune in right here to the XPW TV with me, the host, Larry I'm Vienna. the host! Find out what happened with the mayor gone.
And be Lisi Boy. Are Don't you, forget. Are you done talking? Ahora, ahora. Are you finished? Are you kapoop? Aloha, sayonara. Because, folks, I got the scoop. I had just gotten word that XPW TV has now permission to show the match between Lizzie Borden, oh, and Major Guns, oh. We have got permissions from standards and practices at the television network to show that match right here next week. I can't wait for that, Chief O. Hey, compose yourself. Joy Little, Joy Little, that you got it together, no? Yeah. Like okay? Yeah. Next week, but well, first, Chief, I want to tell you that not everybody in the world is in love with the rubber black diamond. Not everybody has the respect and the loyalty to the rubber black diamond like, like the Larry Rivera. Brown knows it. But I'm going to say a lot of people also feel the lack of respect that brings them down degrade them when the, the man in charge, the Robert Black, come out and talk to them. They don't feel like they are respected. And one of these XPW personality character is Bobo the Clown. Let's check it out. Right now, right now, we're going to go to the ring and we're going to see just what choice words Pogo the Clown had for Rob Black and the Rob Black Army. Watch this. Calling out Rob Black. Tag Team Champion, along with Perry Saturn and Nick Cronus, one of the most agile big men for wow. him to be able to do the 450 splash. And look at that heel kick from there. high impact, the foot through the face, right in the face. Of course, Pogo the Clown, the Putting still, down Pogo like it, like a ton of brick. Pogo the Clown still undefeated here in XPW, the longest undefeated streak in the history of our company. And I'm just betting it could come to an end tonight. I mean, John Cronus, he's ready, he's fresh. And he's been on a huge win streak here at XPW. But look at this German suplex from Pogo. What strength. With execution by Pogo, who is universally recognized as one of the biggest big men, the best big men in the XPW right now. We talk about two big men going at it. I mean, pound for pound. Both these guys well over the 300-pound mark as Pogo the Clown continuing to take it to John Cronus. Pogo the Clown coming out here, aligning himself with nobody, as we both know, Rivera, here in XPW, calling out the Black Army, the whole army. Who does he get? He gets none other than the great John Cronus. I mean, this guy has done so much, not only in the sport, but here at XPW. I mean, what a streak he's been on the last few months. And Chico, speaking of Clown, we saw the Chaggy Dope earlier, Chico, but the other... The other half of the ICP, Jay Violin, Chief. Jay Violin, it's not here. You know what happened at a concert the other night? He had the bottle of Fago in the hand. He had the what? The Fago, Chico, shaking up the bottle, ready to spray it into the crowd. Wow, look at that bottle, almost break his neck. Right over the top and onto the concrete floor. What happened he, to this guy? He's taking the bottle of Chago, shake it, and the bottle cap flew backward, hitting in the eye. Oh! He's got a big eye infection, Chico. So, 
Look at this Cronus off the ring apron. What did you have in mind here, Rivera? Wow, look at the high altitude by the young Cronus. He has the excellent technique and execution that is for putting here today. Like you said earlier, five tank ECW tag team champ. One too many Cuban cigars for yourself tonight, Rivera. Oh, look at that. Right into the security railing goes John Cronus. Poke with a clown. Undefeated here in XPW. John Cronus, man, he's been on a tear, though. He's beaten guys like Nosawa, Homeless Jimmy, to mention a few here in XPW. Wow. Young Cronus. It's match. The beer, what was that? A cerveza right in the head. Of course, of course, that, of course perfect. that was what kind of a, a waste of a good drink is that. Of course, Pogo the Clown, always the Pogo the Clown fan club here at the Olympic Auditorium, wherever XPW goes. But don't count out the fans of John Cronin. I mean, this guy with the 450 flex, man, he gets the crowd on their feet. Well, you, motherfucker! World renowned, world famous. Former, former five time CW tag team champion, as I mentioned before, right now, both big men on the concrete floor, right next to the entrance way. And John Cronus already has the blood, the sangre in the forehead. Está sangrando de la frente. Si tienen los niños, pongan otro cuarto, porque esto está de película aquí. John Cronus now, Pogo the Clown still. Outside on the concrete floor. I mean, these guys match up so well together, Rivera. The size, the sheer size of both men. And don't forget, both these men for their size, so very agile. Look at this, John Cronus coming back. Wait a minute. Tonight. The second energy. Look at this. The second, the second, like a shock. Oh, look. From the, from the electricity in the air. I was telling you about the fans, man. Look at that, the fan. Handing John Cronus a steel chair. What? Right on the back of Poke of the Cloud. It's no surprise why Mr. Robert Black picked Cronus as one of his famous members of the inheritance of the Robert Black Army Chief. Well, you know, Rivera, I mean, Rob Black, he pulled it off with Cronus. I mean, Cronus is renowned all over the world. He's been to Japan, Mexico, Europe, of course, in that other promotion. Uh, back east for years and now he's here in the bright lights of los angeles california in the bright light of the olympic auditorium in xpw both men in the ring irish whip from john Cronus. look at that heel kick look at the agility of this guy man even though he's in the black army man i gotta give this guy credit a spinning heel kick john Cronus executing all kind of technique whether it be the american style oh wait a minute Asian we know what this means this team looks this like the Rivera. Familia de Fuerfito Chico this setting is, it up. It's all over. This has got to be it. Oh, oh. Cronus. Cronus on the top. It's over. One, two. Hey. What the? Both of the cloudy just count. Only two. Is that two or was that three? Oh, my God. That was two. No. Referee. No. Only hit the two. No. Count. No. How the hell did Pogo kick out of it? Oh, now hey, he's got the referee. shovel. Pogo the Cloud. Undefeated. Here at XBW. Look at that. Right to the head. With How the tip of that possible? shovel, the steel How shovel. How is it possible that this poor the clown is speaking out of that 450 splat and hellfire delivery? Pogo the clown, man, right now. He is showing just why he is undefeated here in XPW. Going for a suplex now. All the strength. Oh no, face buster. Unbelievable, Rivera. He's I don't know what to say. We're gonna need more than that to take care Drop of Cronus. the elbow, one, two. It's oh. over, it is over, pull to the cloud. Impossible, I can't hear it. John Cronus is the happy drunk. Oh yeah, somebody happy drunk. Call what you want, Rivera. Look at the video clip. Still undefeated, the first man who I believe to ever, ever kick out of John Cronus' 450 slash. That man right there, Pogo the cloud. XPW. Uh, XPW. I've been through everybody. I f***ing almost murdered everybody over there at XPW. And you know what? I'm still here. And I'm so 
getting depressed. Pogo, maybe if you get a belt, maybe the little kids will love you. And maybe they'll rub my belly. All I want is my belly rub. Title belt. Yeah. That's PW. Tell you something, Rob Black. You give me some competition, Rob Black. Or else maybe. Maybe I'll find you, Rob Black. So Pogo the Clown is still the most single dominant force here in XPW, still undefeated. No one man has been able to pin Pogo the Clown. I mean, he's rolled over guys like Homeless Jimmy, White Trash Johnny Webb, Mr. 80's Dynamite D, Japan's own Nosawa, and now he just rolled over John Cronus, kicking out of the huge 450 splash. I have never seen that before. Now, now, Pogo the Clown demanding he wants a shot at the Messiah XPW World Heavyweight Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, I, Hilary Rivera, believe that Pogo the Clown is in an altered state of mind. He's not thinking in the right frame of brains. He's barking out the wrong three chicken. The Messiah has unleashed the rapture upon us. And the rapture is a question of survival. So Paul the Clown is barking on the wrong tree. When you look into mess with the Messiah, the rage that is present within the Messiah right now makes him a very dangerous influence, character. So Paul will think about it. Use the brain. You might want to stay away from the Messiah. And think about going after the title some other day. Well, you know, Rivera, I don't know about that. I mean, I don't think anybody, I don't think XPW has ever seen a man like Pogo the Clown. I mean, he truly is awesome. He is the most dominant force, I believe, to ever step foot into this company. And you talk about questions. The big question is, on July the 7th, the question that Pogo the Clown, and now the world has, will he get a shot at the Messiah XPW World Heavyweight title? You don't know, I don't know, you don't know anything, pal. Yeah. Cuidado. Yeah, July yeah. the 7th, Saturday night, downtown Los Angeles is the site for XPW's Rapture. Of course, tickets on sale right now. 213-480-3232, Ticketmaster. You charge by phone. You can go to Ticketmaster.com. Or you can go to all of the Ticketmaster outlets here in Southern California. Now, specialty quality tickets are available only through XPW. Call the offices, 818-755-8757. Come to the offices, 11133 Van Owen Street, Sweet Letter D in North Hollywood, or go to xpwrestling.com. You all right? Fine, Jake. The head feeling Doing good. okay right here, brother. You had the concussion going away, but let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Tune in next week right here to the XPW TV as we get more on the Dutch, more information. We will find out more on the Lisi Borden and Mayor Gunn story. Maybe we get a little more 
get get yeah. foolish oh. on that. We will also learn if the new number one contender for the death match type defeat chaos will get a chance, a messiah, and actually a shot to be the new death match champion. King of the death match, right? That's right. Veronica King oh. and the Enterprise. Steer Sono and her whole DJ Rooch. Don't forget about oh, that GQ, buddy. That GQ. That guy's all smart. Jamil White Money, whatever his name is. They are trying to maneuver into the title picture. So it's all going to happen next Saturday night, right here on the XPW TV. And ladies and gentlemen, I am the host, Larry Rivera, saying good night for the Chris Club. The host. Next week of on the XPW TV. Right uh, here, Chico, hasta la próxima, and the man. Man. Boss gonna go tight. Oh, you don't act no more? You want me to go back? No, you're already here. What do you want? I got pack it. I know the drill. Wait, let me get to the position. I'll be here. Go. <laughs> you weren't involved? Man, I don't play with dolls no more. That was then. This is now. No, you gotta, you gotta see these dolls. F*** are these? Dude, are you saying clown posse dolls? What the hell is
Vampiro, who the hell do you think you are? Touching me? Touching Rob Black? Letting your insane clown posse friend kiss Lizzie Borden? That was a big no-no. You stole these belts. The biggest mistake you ever made was giving these belts back. Because these belts are not going anywhere, Vampiro. July 7th, you and me, Grand Olympic Auditorium, through this belt, for the XPW World Heavyweight Championship. I got news for you, Vampiro. This isn't WCW where you can talk your shit and no one's going to touch you. July 7th, you're going to feel my rapture. The future's mine, Vampiro. I'll see you there. Ah!